Hi, I'm Rob Johnstone with Woodworkers Journal Magazine. Today we're going to take you through the steps of how to make an electric guitar using a CNC router. It's the most complicated project I've ever made on a CNC router, but it's made much easier by the fact that I was able to use these CNC router bits from Freud. They include all the specialty bits I needed for machining this guitar, including tapered ball ends, uh, straight ball end bits, up spiral bits, everything I needed to make this guitar and it was critical in its manufacture. Now, we not only give you the free downloadable programming to make the guitar body, but we also give you the programming for the neck and the fingerboard. So it's a complete and really big project. I think you'll like it. I get started by making uh, the guitar body out of two pieces of wood. Let me show you how we do that. These two pieces of wood are going to be glued up to form the guitar solid body. But before we do that glue up, I took the time to plow these two grooves and to drill an extra hole right here. They will allow wiring access from the pickups to the controls. Now that we've got the blank glued up with its internal grooves, we need to locate it on the tabletop. It needs to be roughly square, not perfectly square. And the neck needs to be on the right-hand side of the blank as, we're, as you're looking at it, because that's the orientation that the programming will have. Now we need to secure it with a couple of blocks to keep it from moving. After that, we'll center the bit, and then we'll start some cutting. To get started for, with machining this, the guitar's solid body, we use an up spiral bit uh, provided by Freud. It cuts on a shear rather than like a, with a straight bit. It just does a little bit better job of machining solid wood. That's all of the CNC machining that we're going to be doing on the body. I think you saw it had a couple of tab cuts. That's where it, a bit lifted up and left some material behind. Helps keep the body positioned within the blank as it's com being completed. Now all I have to do is break those tab cuts loose, put the body aside, and we'll move on to machining the neck. Now we're moving on to machining the neck, which is by far and away the most complicated process in this build. First thing you'll notice is that the neck is placed on the platform and on a diagonal. That's because it's too long to go either front to back or side to side. The next thing you'll notice is that it's bisected with two lines. There's a, so there's an X right in the middle and these lines run the length of it down the center. We're going to drill two small registration holes at either end that we're going to use to screw this thing down and hold it securely. What are those holes for? They're so that when we flip this thing over and machine the other side, we um, will have the neck in perfect registration, which is critical. So we've just finished machining the front of the neck. Now we have to flip it over and we have to locate it exactly where it needs to be to be carved from behind. Remember those location holes? They're key to helping us get it in the right spot. I also like to use double stick tape at this point because there's a lot of pressure going back and forth as the, as the machine cuts. There's really basically two more cuts that need to be done on this neck. The first one is to carve the arc of the neck. And this is done with this ball end bit and it's a bunch of cuts that go like this across the neck, which is curious, but it works really well. Then we'll change the bit one more time to a half inch uh, mill end bit and machine the back face of the peg head and we'll be ready to go.
The last component I need to do is the fretboard or the fingerboard. I made it out of this wenge, which is a really dense African hardwood. It looks great. Turned out to be a little bit brittle for my taste, so if I was to do it again, I'd use maple or maybe even ebony. We're going to do three operations. We're going to um, drill out for the little dots in the fingerboard and we're going to use an eighth inch straight bit for that. Then we're going to just barely etch the fret wire locations and for that we're going to use a tapered ball end bit and we're just going to barely scrape the surface so we get a location for that. And then of course we're going to finish with our famous half inch up spiral bit which is going to cut the outside of it. Here's how you do it. Once I got done making all of the wooden components on the CNC router, then it got down to just old-fashioned woodworking. Sanding, applying a finish, gluing the fretboard to the neck, and then there's all of these additional parts that go into an electric guitar. There's tuner heads, there's fret wire, there's little pearl dots that you have to put into the neck, there's pickups, there's a bridge plate, there's a cover plate. So as you can see, there's a lot of parts to be mounted and adjusted after the woodworking is done and the neck is mounted to the guitar. And speaking of the neck, the neck is not only the most complicated thing to do in CNC machining, but it's also complicated to install. And some people may be more comfortable getting a pre-made neck rather than making their own, which you can do. And just make sure that you're buying a 25 and a half inch scale version of the neck. So, this was a very challenging project, but one that I enjoyed from beginning to end. I was impressed with how the CNC technology helped me get through it, and I was especially impressed with the Freud CNC router bits. They made the machining a snap. Now, if you're a guitar player or you know one, I would suggest go ahead and making this project. It's not going to be a walk in the park, but you'll really be happy when you're done. I'm Rob Johnstone for Woodworker's Journal. Keep on making sawdust.